Welcome into Texans today. I'm your host, Jeremy Chugs. And before we get into the latest Texans news and rumors for today's show, I have a challenge for you. My bosses, they actually challenged me. They said, can you get 50 su new subs on today's video? I said, hey, we got the realest fans in the entire National Football League. I know Texans fans have my back. So to prove to my bosses that Texans fans are real ones, go down there and hit that sub button for daily videos around the Houston Texans for, wait, how much is it? Oh, it's for free. So if you want free daily Texans videos, you want to help me out grow this Texans channel, go down and hit the sub button or go to youtube.com slash Texans TV. Coming up on the program today, we have some really good Texans injury news around an explosive rookie wide receiver who showed out a little bit last season. I'll tell you all about that. And the five biggest needs for the Houston Texans, I'll let you know who's the best free agent available at each of those positions. But before we get going, I really, I mean, we have to talk about it, right? The Texans, New Jersey's leaked by owner Cal McNair. These are the, there's four different jerseys. These are one of them that he leaked on Reddit yesterday. The white with the blue, you see the little horns on the side. If I'm kind of looking, kind of see in the reflection there, Tank Dell, I think the helmets are around the same. I think they are the same. I don't know. Maybe these are just a little snippet of what is to come for the Texans, New Jerseys for the 2024 season. But I have to ask you folks at home, do you like the jersey? Do you not like the jersey? If you do like the jersey, go down and like the video right now. Go hit that thumbs up icon. And if you don't like the jersey, comment why you don't like it. I've heard some people say it's too close to the Falcons and the Cardinals. I don't necessarily agree. I think they're pretty fresh. I saw some um, you know, renderings of what it might look like with the battle red, and I think that looks absolutely sick. But go down in the comment section right now. Let me know if you don't like it. And if you do like it, go down and hit that thumbs up icon. Now, before we got going on today's program, the Texans actually did make another move in NFL free agency, signing defensive lineman Mario Edwards. He's a former second round pick. Last year, played with the Seattle Seahawks, getting 21 tackles, two sacks, five tackles for loss. He has 21 and a half sacks over his career. Another depth piece, another older veteran guy that the Texans add to the, this defensive line unit. Now, I this makes me think they're not gonna go after any more big name free agents for the, def for the defensive line, maybe they go for it in uh, the 2024 NFL draft. But D'Amico Ryan's Nick Casario adding another guy to this free agency class in Mario Edwards. Now, the latest on Tank Dell, Nathaniel Tank Dell, and his injury that he sustained last December, a fractured fibula ugh, was not good. I mean, happened on a goal line play where he was blocking. So, Really upset a lot of Texans fans because he was having such an amazing year. But the good news is he is looking fantastic in his recovery. His personal trainer said that he's actually ahead of schedule and he should be 100% good to go for training camp. And this came straight from Tank Dell. He said, they've been getting me on, on the right road, talking about the Texans trainers and medical staff. And I feel like I'm back and ready. I'm waiting for the lights to shine again and for us to go out there as a team and complete the mission. I'm telling you right now, this team has one goal and one goal only, and that is to make it to a Super Bowl. We've already seen the Texans make the playoffs this past season, way ahead of schedule of where they're supposed to be. They have a star quarterback on a rookie deal still. This comment right here from Tank Dell kind of echoes what I've been saying this whole off season. It is go for it time. This is your time to go for a Super Bowl, something that this franchise have never done in their history and if we look at tank dell's stats from this past season it's really exciting to think what he can do in a full year two if he's healthy i mean 47 receptions 709 yards yards after the catch 152 he had 34 first downs and seven touchdowns tank dell was an absolute beast last season turn me up tank turn me up if you're with me go down and spam three if you're pumped to see tank dell going into next season i mean Tank Dell, adding him with Nico Collins and company going into this next year. I know the Texans are trying to add another wide receiver to this room, but already with Tank Dell and Nico Collins, if they if they don't end up adding another guy, maybe they draft somebody late in the 2024 NFL draft 
or maybe early wide receiver. I still think the Texans are good for the receiving core as long as you have Collins and Dell healthy for the season because Nico Collins, another ascending wide receiver for this Houston Texans team, had 80 receptions over 1,200 yards, almost 1,300 yards last year, and eight touchdowns. I think the Texans are looking good in their receiving core. They also brought back Dalton Schultz. They have Brevin Jordan. So have some guys there for C.J. Stroud to target. Noah Brown as well. But Tank Dell, his recovery is great news for this Texans team going into next season. Now coming up, the top five needs for the Houston Texans and the best free agent at each of those positions. But Today's show wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for our friends over at Prize Picks. Today's show is made possible by Prize Picks, and they've got specials for new and returning users alike for March Madness when you head over to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Football season may be over, but the action on the hardwood is heating up. Whether it's March Madness or the fight for the NBA playoffs, there's no shortage of high-stakes basketball in moments like this in this time of the year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. So you can put it on the Houston Rockets or maybe put it on this. They have a special, the Caitlin Clark special. If you haven't been following women's college basketball, Caitlin Clark, one of the best players in the entire country. They're giving you a freebie at .5 points. I'm telling you, this woman, she averages well over .5 points. She is an absolute heater from the three-point line. So that's an easy money. And Patrick Cartier, my, one of my uh, insiders here at Chat Sports, one of my guys who follows college basketball closely, he said, this is a lock if I've ever seen one. Patrick Cartier averages over 10 points a game this season, and they have his demon pick at 9.5 points. Give me the more on that as well. You can use my picks or you can fade my picks. Just do it over at Prize Picks. March Madness kicks off tonight with the first four games, and you can pick more or less right now. Prize Picks is also giving us a free pick, like I said, with the Caitlin Clark matchup on Saturday. Just select more than 0.5 points for Clark and pair it with another winner for three times your money. You can do what I did, or you can pick your own. Prize Picks is so simple. You just pick more or less uh, on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get started now if you haven't already at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and get a first time deposit match of $100. Once again, that is prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Pick more, pick less. It is that easy. Now, before I give you my top five, I always want to give you a chance to voice your opinion as well on this program. So if you agree with me, if you don't, let me know what are your top five needs for the Texans going towards the end of NFL free agency and into the 2024 NFL draft. Going to be doing some more mock drafts here in a little bit. I was going to showcase all of your mock drafts, but then the Texans decided to go ahead and trade away their first round picks. So got to crumple those up and kind of throw them in the trash bin. But let me know down in the comment section, the top five needs for the Houston Texans right now. Coming in at number one, it's got to be cornerback. They have Derek Stingley on one side. Jeff, They signed Jeff Okuda to a one-year deal, but it's still a question mark in my opinion. I don't know if Okuda is a guy that I feel comfortable starting opposite of Derek Stingley and saying, hey, yeah, the job is yours. We signed you in free agency. So the top name still available, in my opinion, would be Stephon Gilmore. Played with the Dallas Cowboys last season. When Trayvon Diggs went down, Gilmore had to step up and be the CB1, and he was decent for the Cowboys last season. 68 tackles, two interceptions, 13 pass breakups. Is a really good veteran cornerback. Yeah, he still doesn't have like the speed and agility as he did before, but he's a really savvy player, a good name for the Texans. They're looking to upgrade at the cornerback position. The next one, I went back and forth, but with the Mario Edwards signing, I really don't think they're going to go after another defensive lineman. So I slotted in safety at the number two spot. Yes, Jalen Petrie, Jimmy Ward, they are coming back this next season. But do we really trust that duo? Jalen Petrie had a really down year in his, in his sophomore season. And then Jimmy Ward was injured throughout all of last year, ended the year on IR. So could they go out and sign a guy like Justin Simmons. He's been on the market. A couple teams have shown interest. I mean, this is a dude past three seasons, an all pro caliber type player. Last season, 70 tackles, three interceptions, eight pass breakups. Justin Simmons is a great player. And if the Texans were looking to add maybe a veteran presence in the safety room, a guy who 
has great ball skills, who can get you some interceptions and play that center fielder for you in the back of the defense. I think Justin Simmons fits that perfectly. Now, next up would be still, it would still be defensive line for me. I still think you need to add another defensive tackle, another big guy up the middle. I, uh, up the middle. I get you have Zaniko Autry, Foley Fotokasi as well, but I still feel like you need another defensive tackle in that room. So give me Calais Campbell, a guy who at this point in his career, he's ring chasing. He's looking for teams that can possibly win slash make a Super Bowl. And the Texans, they are an ascending team in the AFC. He had six and a half tackles last season, 56 tackles, 10 tackles for loss. Yes, he's getting up there in age, but he still has a lot left in the tank. At least one or two more seasons, in my opinion. Calais Campbell, if the Texans are looking to add a mean guy in the middle of that defense, give me Calais Campbell, who played for the Falcons last season. Now, coming in at number four, I was kind of weighing my options. What do I do at number four? I, I said it earlier in the video. With Tank Dell and Nico Collins, if they're healthy next season, I think the Texans, they're doing pretty good at the wide receiver position. But that's the whole thing, is it, it's if they stay healthy. Nico Collins has had injury issues in the past. Tank Dell played 11 games last year. I really like those two, but if they only if they can stay healthy. So why not bring in another guy at the wide receiver position? I know a lot of y'all are probably thinking Mike Williams, but give me Tyler Boyd, the number three from the Bengals last season. 67 receptions, 667 yards, two touchdowns. Last year, Tyler Boyd, 6'2", 203, a bigger-bodied wide receiver that the Texans can put on the outside. I wouldn't mind if he'd signed a somewhat team-friendly deal to come over to the Texans, be our third wide receiver. He'd still start over guys like Robert Woods, Noah Brown, and the rook, uh, rookies from last season, John Mechie and Xavier Hutchinson. But I would really find this as an intriguing move, a really interesting move if they did bring in Tyler Boyd because, like I said, I don't know if they're looking – or just a third option. I think they're looking for a star at the wide receiver position if they are going to bring one in. That's why they were really in on the Keenan Allen trade before the Bears got him uh, for a fourth round pick. Now, my last need for the Houston Texans is going to be offensive line. Now, I'm looking at the interior of the offensive line, and I was looking at the guys who are available, and call me crazy, I think the best guy available is somebody who you had last year in Michael Dieter. Yes, he allowed three sacks in 12 games, but He's familiar with the Texans offense. He played good enough as a step in for the Texans last season at the center position. He can also play guard. I would like if the Texans maybe went out and signed Michael Dieter to another one-year deal if another team doesn't swipe him up. I thought he was a serviceable backup, somebody who you could trust if maybe Juice Scruggs doesn't work out at left guard, if Jarrett Patterson doesn't come back and is good at center, somebody who you can kind of slot in at one of those interior offensive line positions if needed. Now, that's all I have for you on today's show. If you haven't already, I told you at the beginning of the show, I need 50 subs on this video. So if you haven't already, hey, you're at the end of the video. You obviously like something that you watch. So go down and hit that sub button right now. Join the 12,000 strong that are making this the number one Texans channel on YouTube, the fastest growing Texans channel on YouTube. So get started today. Or today. Go down and hit that sub button or go to youtube.com slash Texans TV for daily Texans videos.